rainy morning in Da Nang and I'm on my way to the airport because I'm going to Hanoi. I really love this city and I cannot wait to come back to Look at this plastic <laughs> and all the taxi cabs here. the weather like this in uh, Da Nang because everyone's got a cold. Taxi cab driver had a horrible cold. I mean, he was sniffling and everything. You want to help me with my bag? He said, no, that's okay, buddy. I'll take it. Yeah. Very nice guy. Poor guy. I hope he feels better. The thing about these simple airports, these older ones, you know, you just get out of the cab, you go up to the counter, you check in and go. They're small and simple. The big airports that you see nowadays where you got, you know, you have to take a tram somewhere and three escalators to get to the, you know, an island where you can check your bags and then you go to, through security at different wings and it's, it's a real, it can be a real challenge. And they're beautiful, they're really nice and lots of amenities and I love them, don't get me wrong, but it's also nice to have something simple like this. Yeah, you know, the airport is not big and everyone seems to be over on the other side. And on this side of the airport, there is nobody. I've got this whole restaurant to myself. And it's about 10 a.m., just waiting for my flight. Anyways, I have to say that I cannot help but compare Vietnam to China because that's where I've been living and that's been my life for the last few years. There are a few similarities, but for the most part, it's, it's a completely different world here. I feel more free and I feel like it's more open. I mean, the simple fact that the internet works here and it's cheap and it's fast, YouTube, Facebook, Messenger, every website I try to get onto, it works. That tells me so much about this country the people who live here too, because in China the, the websites don't work unless you have the VPN and most, of course, they're illegal, most people don't have them. I feel like the Vietnamese people, although it's a socialist communist country, whatever that means, and you know, it's a blurred line these days, right? They're more open, they're participating in a global conversation that the Chinese are not. I can really see a big difference between the two peoples and the two cultures. I'm not saying one's better than the other, I'm just saying that there's major differences that you see in the way they treat people, the way they act, their knowledge of, of pop culture. It's just a fascinating paradigm to witness. And this city, I mean, it's a shitty day today. I mean, I mean this is probably the worst weather that the Nang gets. But I loved this city. I mean, I really loved it a lot. I heard somewhere that they're growing at over 10% a year. And I see it, I see the development everywhere. And I see the large swaths of lands going from the south and the north side of town along the beaches. They've done these subdivisions and they've done the street layouts and then they've started selling these individual lots for you to build a restaurant or a shop or a hotel or an apartment building, whatever. There seem, the zoning laws here seem to be very lax. I saw so many foreigners with their own business, you know, little market, you know, guy selling Chicago deep dish pizza, surf shop rental place, coffee shop. If you want to do it here, you can. There seems to be little, if any, restrictions on business. The opportunity here is massive. And of course, as China and America continue to butt heads, many of the factories in my town in Dongshan have been moving. They've been moving to Southeast Asia. They've been moving to Mexico and to Eastern Europe. And Vietnam has a very strategic place, you know, right on the South China Sea. It just, it makes sense. A lot of worldwide companies setting up shop here. On the south side of town, there's a giant company. I don't know what it was called, so FTP or something. It was a big corporation. And they had the big office building and a factory. And across the highway was a giant privately owned housing development just for the employees. And they have these big, beautiful homes and markets and their own money system. And I was talking to my friend who lives in Saigon. And he lives in an area that is owned by a Taiwanese company. It's not owned by the Vietnamese government. In fact, the Vietnamese police are apparently are not allowed to patrol the streets in his little district. You know, they have their own private security. I'm curious about the other surrounding companies, Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, Myanmar, Malaysia. But all of the ASEAN countries seem to be booming. Here's another crazy thing. I noticed this a couple days ago. Da Nang, the city of Da Nang, has free Wi-Fi all over the city. Everywhere. You just get on, it's free. I'm, and it's fast. And in here, very, very small seats. It's a new airplane. It's just... 
I feel like every plane I get on, it's like, it's literally like one foot between me. I mean, I can't put my arm all the way out to film. I mean, this is as, this is as far as I can get it. with the restrooms in Vietnam. They all have Western style toilets. They're all clean with soap, towels, toilet paper, and they don't smell. It's about 30 kilometers to my hotel. Greetings from the rooftops of the old quarter of Hanoi. Today I've checked into a, an older hotel, a small hotel, in the heart of the old district, Hanoi Nostalgia Hotel and Spa. It's not the Four Seasons, but that's okay because I got it for a very, very low price, less than 50 bucks a night. Now I originally booked one of these rooms here, down here, on the street with a balcony. And when I got here, the guy said, you know, you don't want the balcony one because of all the noise from the street. And sure enough, I saw both rooms and there's a bar right across the street, a nightclub, that it goes till 2 a.m. And that balcony overlooks the bar and I would not have been able to sleep. So what I did instead is I got a room over here on the back side. That's actually a little bit larger. It's still gonna be noisy and loud, I'm sure, because it's the old quarter, but that's fine. I didn't come to Hanoi to relax. I came here to explore and to experience it. Streets are chaotic. It's a lot more gritty. It's definitely older, not the beach lifestyle that it came from in Da Nang, but it has its own charm and its own flavor and its own smell. I smell the barbecue already, but let's go take a look more at this hotel. All right now I'm on the rooftop. has a number of different buildings that have all been put together. Very, very common here. They've got an indoor, outdoor pool. It's weird, it's like in the center of a courtyard. It's a very neat, almost like a little private balcony. I wonder if it's for these rooms, but it's open to the public. Great artwork all along the walls. 